Hello everyone and welcome to another video. It's been about two months since my last video, so it's a pretty good time for me to chug out a new one. So what I have for you guys today is a new uh, gaming PC, not gaming PC, new workstation PC build. Uh, this build is going to cost me a total of about 58 maybe $56, uh, as the only part I actually needed to purchase is the motherboard. So um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background as to why I'm building this. My my dad has an office that he works out of, and his assistant's computers are really so slow. I sold them a Dell Dimension 9200, I want to say about two and a half years ago for them to use there. And I, I pretty much upgraded it to the max extent. It's got four gigs of memory and Core 2 Duo and whatnot, but it's just it's hitting its slow point. It's just getting slow. So I decided I'd build a new one. A few days ago, a friend of mine gave me this Dell Inspiron 1 all-in-one uh, desktop here. Oh, that's broken, and I was hoping it would just be a problem with the memory chip being bad or something, but it ends up the power uh, supply, the power supply is, is busted, and that power supply is built into the motherboard because it's a laptop-style motherboard. Uh, the motherboard costs more to purchase than the entire computer's worth. So I decided I'd pull the parts out of that um, and buy a motherboard and combine it with all the other spare parts I had and build a new PC. So what this thing had is it had a AMD Athlon 2 X4 quad core CPU. It's 2.4 gigahertz. It's about five years old. I also had two chips of DDR3 memory. I had four gig and a two gig for a total of six gigabytes of DDR3 1333 megahertz memory. One terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, and an installation of Windows 7. So I took those parts and went ahead and I did some research and I bought. The Gigabyte 78 LMT USB 3 motherboard that costs about $56, I think. It's a micro ATX. It's got um, plenty of good stuff to it. It's socket AM3 Plus, but also supports the socket AM3 CPU, such as the Athlon X4. So usually, what I do when I'm building PCs is I do a time lapse. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to kind of make this video in a segmented format where I'll just kind of you know pull out the camera and make a little bit of an update every time something happens. Um, so just to review one more time, I'm using this motherboard. I pulled the hard drive, memory, and CPU out of this machine. And I have this computer here that I bought a while back. I actually bought a bunch of these for a pretty cheap price to try to resell them. The case is looking pretty good. It needs a little bit of cleanup work on the top and stuff, but I'm just going to go ahead and pop these parts into this case after pulling this motherboard out. Because this thing's only got like an um, Athlon 2, X2, and DDR2 memory. So, yeah, I also have the this a Cooler Master Elite 430 case. It's got a side window and a bunch of fancy fans and stuff in it. But I think I'd better save that for a gaming build rather than something like a workstation. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. It doesn't need a whole lot of parts because... Uh, you know, it's not a gaming rig or anything. And I think I'll probably pull the heat sink from this machine, which is pretty small, if I don't have one from my bucket over there. So I'm going to go ahead and get right down to it and make updates as necessary. So I got the old motherboard out of this case, and I'm actually going to use the old power supply to it. It's only a 350 watt, so at first I was a little bit skeptical. But I went on Newegg's site, and I have a... Um, power supply requirement calculator and I entered all the hardware in to that calculator that I'm going to be putting into this machine and it came out to only about 190 watts. So if Newegg is right, if their calculator is right, um, I should only need a 190 watt power supply and got a 350, so that's good. Um, and this is what we're looking at for the motherboards. Actually, I, I pulled it out, it's actually a very flashy looking motherboard, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of a legacy motherboard, you know, the uh, the video card slot's only a PCI Express 2.0 and whatnot, but um, and supports AM3, which is a bit older, of course, which is the CPU is. But here's what we're looking for for ports. It's got a VGA, a DVI, and an HDMI port, all integrated, so that's going to be pretty great. So I won't, I won't even have to put a video card in it. Um, I would have perhaps preferred getting a cheaper motherboard with no video card slot, but I really wanted one with four memory slots. Because I have, I have some DDR3 memory sitting around, but a lot of it's only 2 gig chips. I've had 2 slots with 2 2, two gig chips, it would only have 4 gigabytes of memory. Um, so it's looking, everything's looking pretty great. I'm going to go ahead and toss the, some, the uh, parts in the case now and continue the video. Although one thing I was thinking is that I've got my 1 terabyte hard drive here, but I also have a 320 gig um, 
that's also 7200 RPM they had just kind of lying around. I'm thinking, you know, the person who's using this computer probably isn't going to put more than 40 or 50 gigs of actual data on it. I'm going to look up the specs and age of this hard drive here, and if it's if it's not much slower than that one, I'll probably just use the 320 because I don't want to waste a big one terabyte drive on the computer that's really not even going to use it. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to sacrifice speed there. If this thing has only got you know a cache a quarter the size of that one, I'll go ahead with that one. But yeah, um, so that's it for now. I'll go ahead and pull the camera out when I got more. Okay, so I pieced it all together, and now comes for the moment of truth. Uh, I haven't plugged in the hard drive yet, <clears throat> I haven't installed a DVD drive, and most of my uh, front panel plugins aren't plugged in yet, just plugged in the power switch. Um, so next up is really only to test out if it works or not. Uh, another little thing though is that this rear fan doesn't have a plug-in on the motherboard anywhere, which is weird. It only has a one, it only has one fan plug-in, so I'm going to have to make, uh, get an adapter to adapt the power supply, one of the power supply plugs to this plug, which means that the rear fan won't be uh, dynamically controlled by the motherboard anymore. But that's not really a big deal. So uh, yeah, um, that's I means pretty much all pieced together. I'm just going to go ahead and see if it works. I think these boards have a very high DOA rate, so we'll, we'll see what we get though. Okay, well, what we get right now is absolutely nothing because I haven't plugged the power cable in. I plugged everything in, so I guess I subconsciously assumed that um, the power plug would be in too. Okay, let's try that again. Alright, set up. Okay, so it works at least. I think I might have missed the setup. Yeah, I missed the setup button. It's delete. I'm still used to it being F2. I didn't actually hit it in time. Cool, cool. I only put one gig of uh, one chip I mean of memory in. Uh, just you know, for testing purposes, keep it as simple as possible. But uh, oh, I don't like these BIOSes. They're not very well designed. Where should I go? Uh, PC health status. Let's do that. So we're looking at. 27 degrees Celsius CPU temperature, okay, CPU fan is going insanely fast, making a lot of noise. Um, so yeah, that works. I guess the next step is just to go ahead and decide which one of these hard drives I want to use, pop more memory in it, and start loading an OS. So I looked up the specs of those two drives I have, and uh, the one terabyte has a 64 meg cache, and the 320 has an 8 megabyte cache. So the one terabyte has a cache of 8 times the size of the smaller one. And uh, it doesn't say much about its transfer rates or anything, but overall I think the one terabyte drive is really the better one to go with. I, I couldn't put the 320 gig in this machine with a good conscience and say that it's going to run perfectly fast. So what I'm doing right now is because this has someone else's data on it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and shrink the main partition and, ins and pop the drive in here and install the operating system on this just to get it going right now. Then I'll go ahead and pull a person's data off and wipe the free space and expand the partition for this installation later. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start up disk management dot msc on my laptop here. This is a useful little uh, hard drive enclosure I got running. I can view all the partitions and whatnot to my drives. I'm going to go to disk 2 I believe that's going to be it. Yeah, I'm going to right click on this and go to shrink volume. That's going to take a while to query the drive for shrink space. It might not shrink it by enough, but um, hopefully I'll be able to shrink up this partition here so I can go ahead and install Windows 7 uh, on this computer on that, on that new partition I'm going to make and then later I'll transfer all the person's data off and I'll wipe all the free space. So yeah, that's it for now. So a few more things. Uh, I got Windows installation running right now, installing Windows 7 Pro 64. Um, I did notice the motherboard does in fact have a uh, another four-pin plug for a fan. It's actually hidden right. Where is it? Right in there. Which is weird because it's all the way over there, and usually the system fans are either on the side of the case, like right here, or back here. So. Uh, I ran the cable around to there. I also noticed that with these memory slots, the first slot is over here, it goes one, two, three, four. So I'm assuming that this slot is like the primary slot you're supposed to put the memory in. So I did that. I don't think it really makes a big of a difference though. 
Um, I swapped out the CPU fan from this motherboard that I pulled out of this case because uh, the other one's making tons of noise. I think it's because this one is a four pin fan and this fan is a three pin. I think the fourth pin is for, uh, I don't know, probably for added capability of dynamic fan speed control, which is why this one is at 100%. And this one's actually being dynamically controlled. And the heat sink is nice and cool. There's I can, I can barely feel any heat in it, so I think the CPU is running at a fine temperature. So, uh, yeah, everything's looking pretty good, and I'm installing Windows on that new partition on, on the drive I made. So, uh, yep, I plugged in the rest of the um, pins here for the front panel, power lights and whatnot. I'm going to probably tidy up these cables a little bit, zip tie them up. Same thing with those later once I'm done. And, uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good. Currently downloading all the drivers for Windows 7 and 64 on my laptop here, and the, the chipset driver is 233 megabytes. With my internet, which goes at like not even 300 kilobytes a second, usually it's going to take a little while, but I uh, should be done with at least some of those drivers by the time Windows is done installing to make it all go fast, versus, you know, installing Windows and then downloading the drivers. So yeah, that's about it for now. Uh, I'll, you know, pull up the camera again when things are all set up. Alright, so I'm all set up right now and things are running pretty smoothly. Got all the drivers installed with the exception of the USB 3.0 driver, which doesn't really want to work. I'm going to have to try to find one elsewhere because I plug into the USB 3 port and it just it doesn't recognize anything I plug in. So the Windows tells me that driver is missing, so that's going to have to get fixed. But other than that, things are running pretty smoothly. Um, it's only got 6 gigabytes of memory, though. I might upgrade that later. Um... But yeah, I'm pretty much just installing stuff, checking for updates right now, uh, downloading programs that we're going to need for it, like Chrome and whatnot. It's idling at a pretty good usage amount, about 25% CPU usage, which is acceptable, I guess. We're looking at about half memory usage right now, because it has 6 gigs of memory, but uh, it takes half a gig and puts that towards data, uh, integrated graphics, so only 5.5 are actually usable. And I have, I have a 1 gigabyte chip, I also have two 2 gig chips I kind of want to keep for myself. But I have a 1 gig chip I was contemplating putting in there. So it would have a 4 gig chip, a 2 gig chip, and a 1 gig chip. It would, it would be kind of weird to have 7 gigs of memory in a computer. Just It would look weird on paper. Um, and I don't think it would really help out that much. So I'm probably going to go on eBay and buy a second uh, chip that this thing is. This is a 4 gig and this is 2 gig. I'll just buy a second 4 gig of this exact type to make sure it'll run dual channel. I'll take this 2 gig out of 2 4 gig chips in dual channel mode. Um, for a total of 8 gigs. But anyway, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and let it sit here and update overnight. I, I installed TeamViewer and whatnot on it so I can remote it uh, whenever I need to. Pretty much all I got to do is either install that DVD drive or just pull out completely. I don't know if we're going to need it or not. You know, put the case on and it'll be all ready to go. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. It only took me a couple hours to build this thing and get it all up and running and everything. Uh, the longest part of it all is just downloading the installation files for drivers and stuff because my internet is so slow. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this video wasn't super, super interesting or anything, but, you know, it is what it is, and, you know, this is what I like doing, so hopefully you guys found it interesting. So that'll be it uh, for now, I guess. I hope to see you guys in my next videos.